Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video I'm going to show you how to do conversions with moles. It's... Welcome back. Allow me to present to you the Molar Express. Yes, it is magical just like the Polar Express, except no creepy CGI Tom Hanks. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> but as cheesy and as corny as it may sound, this tool has helped countless students over the years, and I am proud to show you how this works. Okay? So, Hopefully you already understand the basics of a train, um, so you kind of understand the analogy here. Uh, but anytime you get on a train to go somewhere, it's not like you have the ability to you know, go up front and go talk to the engineer and say, hey, you mind just going to this stop and just doing a non-stop thing and you know, forget all the other stations? It doesn't work like that. Whenever you board a train, you have to go through every station in the order in which it appears on the track. I mean, it's just the physical reality of riding a train. It is no different with molar conversions, which is why I use the train analogy uh, when, I, when we set out um, the, this whole concept here. Okay, so just like our stations, you know how they go in order, these are the units that we use to convert uh, in all of the conversions that we do. Okay, so let, let me show them to you in order. Okay, so we've got ions, we've got molecules or atoms, We've got moles, and we have mass, which of course is measured in grams, okay? So the units represent our stations, and then the, the information up top, these are the conversion factors that help us to go between uh, each of these conversions. So whenever you're going between moles and grams, you have to use the molar mass. And where do you find the molar mass? On the periodic table, of course. Uh, when you're going between molecules and atoms and moles. You use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. And then in the unlikely event that you have to go to ions, so from molecules to ions, it doesn't happen all that often, but sometimes it does, you will use the formula of the compound that you're looking at to look at the subscripts to figure out you know, what your conversion rate is going to be. Okay. So now that I've kind of explained that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a couple examples of how this all works, um, and then you'll be able to then use this and apply it to literally every molar question that you could ever, ever be given, okay? So for example, let's just say um, you, you, you're given you know, 32.8 grams of sodium chloride, and I want to know how many moles that is. All right, so we're starting here at grams. We're going to move on over to moles using the molar mass, and you can see that this is a one-step process. All right, so here we go. Put that over one, multiply by. Okay, so since grams is on top here, that means grams has to go on the bottom with moles. NaCl on top, because that's molar mass, and then we look it up on the periodic table, right? So uh, sodium has a mass of 23 grams per mole, chlorine has a mass of 35.5 grams per mole, you add that together and we get 58.5 grams for every one mole, okay? So then I cross that out, and then you just simply multiply across, and you just grab your calculator that divided by that gives you your answer. Okay? Let me show you another example of how this can work. Alright, let's say that you are given, I don't know, I'm totally making this up, uh, 2.03 times 10 to the 25th uh, atoms of iron. And I want to know how many grams that is. Okay, so that means we're starting here at atoms. What we're looking for is grams. Notice there is a station in between the two. So we cannot go from atoms to grams in one step, no matter how much we want to, because the train requires us to go through that mole station before we can get to grams. 
Okay, so that means this is a two-step process. Step number one is using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. Okay, so we're going to do that. So atoms on top, meaning atoms on the bottom. We've got uh, moles of iron on top. Okay, and according to this, it is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron for every one mole. Okay, we can cross out atoms. We're left with moles, but that's not what we're looking for. We want grams, so now we've got one more step. Multiply by, all right, we got moles of iron on top, so moles of iron goes on the bottom with grams of iron on top, okay? And then we just grab our periodic table the mass of iron is 55.8 grams for every one mole. Cross out moles. We're left with grams. And then we simply, we're going to multiply these two numbers and then divide by that. Okay? So you can use this tool for literally every question. You look to see where you are starting you look to see where the question is asking you to go, and it automatically tells you how many steps you must take in order to get to your final destination, and it also gives you the conversion factor that you need. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna go through the process of actually calculating things out, and I'll give you lots more practice with this, uh, but I wanted to just use this video to show you how to use the Molar Express, and I promise you, if you use it and you really get um, really grab onto it, man, it's going to make your life so much easier and it's going to clear up so much confusion for you uh, when you're doing these molar conversions. Okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, if you have any further questions, please comment below. Uh, and if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button so you can get great chemistry tutorial videos. Alright, thank you guys so much. Remember, I am Non Dan. And neither are you. Check you later.